All right, let's look at example 12.4. I recommend looking at 12.2 and 12.3 to further, um, or to get better on this topic of working with these equations, but I will use them, and we will use them over and over again throughout the semester. But I wanted to do another one. This one is going to use BDB is equal to ADS this time. So at least you get one of each. Um, in this problem, it's kind of a complicated scenario, but we can dumb it down a little bit. we got a metallic particle subjected to the influence of a magnetic field as it travels downward through a fluid. And it extends from plate A to plate B. So those are metal plates producing a magnetic field. Um, if the particle is released from rest at C, the midpoint, they call C... S is equal to uh, 100 millimeters, that's automatically 0.1 meters in my head, and it's going to go from that distance, we know that this dis dis distance is 200 millimeters, or 0.2 meters. Okay, um, so something I'm going to do in this problem that the book doesn't do is assign directions and this is what I will do throughout the whole semester and what the book flip-flops and changes. So if you look at my solutions versus the book, mine will always have a positive to the right and positive up. That's the directions I'm assuming. If I do a free body diagram, mass times gravity is going to be a negative when I sum the forces, that kind of thing. Always. I always do it that way. Um, and then if your answer comes out as negative, that means you're going to the left or you're going down instead. Um, it makes you not have to remember what direction you chose and have to flip-flop your answer. Your answer meaning has more meaning right away, in my opinion. Uh, I just see less errors when we do it this way. So, this thing is going to fall from here all the way down to here. This is some S, this is some S2. Um, <clears throat> and they give us the acceleration equation, so we don't have to deal with what, the, what caused the acceleration or the force yet. They say the acceleration is equal to 4S meters per second squared. So it's a function of S. So, since it's a function of s, we're going to use vdv is equal to ads. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a function of s and its acceleration. Go ahead and plug that in there. And we can integrate. It was released from rest, so we'll give it an initial velocity of 0, and it'll go to some velocity v. By the way, we're finding the velocity. Um, and it started at some s equals to 0.1 meters and we'll just go to some generic s so we can use this for any distance it drops and then plug in the delta s for this specific scenario so integrating this would give me one half v squared on the left side evaluated from zero to v and the right side i get um, oh, and yeah, so here we go. I just made, I almost made the mistake that I just said I don't do. Um, they gave us the acceleration as 4s. That acceleration is going down, so I'm going to call that a negative 4s meters per second squared. So plug a minus sign in there. And then, then we'll get a minus 4 over 2 s squared evaluated from 0.1 meters to s. Alright, evaluating and rearranging, multiplying by 2 and square rooting, we get that the velocity is equal to a negative 2, it's going down, s squared minus 0 0.01, and then this all has a square root over it, or a 1 half. And that's in meters per second. We can evaluate this at any s. In this case, it would be s equal to 0.1 meter or 0.2 meters. 
Um, it also asks for the time to travel that distance. In that case, we would use our definition ds dt is equal to velocity. Let's say ds is equal to v dt by separating the variables. And we have this function for velocity now. Um, this is a little bit more difficult to integrate than I'm going to ask you to do on a test or anything, but your homework might ask you to. And check out Symbolab. If Symbolab won't integrate it, um, I think it's integrator-calculator.net or .com. That'll usually integrate it. Um, your calculator, like I have a cheap TI-36X or something, it'll do numeral, numerical integration. So if you plug in the limits, it'll give you an answer to. Where, and your regular calculator, your awesome graphing calculators that I don't own probably will do it also. I just usually resort to something like Symbolab. Um, so we would plug in V right here, our negative 2 S squared minus 0 0.1 all raised to the 1 half. Oop, I'm sorry. I separated these incorrectly. We want um, ds is equal to v dt, but when we separate variables, v is a function of s, so we're actually going to get ds over v is equal to t. So if you look at the book and are wondering what's going on, that's what happens. So now I'll take ds plug in negative 2, our velocity, times s squared minus 0 0.01, all raised to the 1 half, and that is equal to our dt. And we can integrate this one from 0 to t. Started from rest, and from 0 0.1 to whatever s, and in this case it would be a 0.2. Okay, this is a little more difficult than I would ask you on a test, like I said. Um, you still need to know how to do these. But we would get some natural log of square root 0.2 squared, that's our s, that's 0.2, minus 0.01 plus 0.2 plus 2.303, all divided by 2. And crank the handle, comes out to be 0.658 seconds. So that's how long it's going to take to travel, 0.1 meters if it started at the middle, and travel towards plate B. With an acceleration of minus 4s. So. Our acceleration is a function of s, rule of thumb, go to v dv is equal to a ds.